Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I don't really have a very complex mathematical video for you today, but there's something that's been bugging me the last couple of games that I want to investigate, and I think it should be pretty easy. I've recently played some Team Black Forest and Oasis maps, and I found that it's pretty standard to send some villagers out to wall up on both maps as early as possible. The earlier you can send villagers out to do that, the more aggressively you can wall, securing extra resources. But the problem I run into is the wolves. I'm not really sure how villagers do against them before and after loom, and I don't even know if I need loom before I send them out against the wolves because I've never sat down and actually looked at it. I played around with some wolf scenarios in this video out of my own interest, and I thought I'd let you all in on the results, just in case maybe you've been wondering some of the same kind of things that I have. So let's take a look. First of all, I wanted to know how far away my guys have to be before the wolf notices them. As it turns out, the range actually seems to be variable, and sometimes I can really sneak up on the wolves, but generally they come charging when my villager is hanging out less than 5 full tiles away from them. Before you ask, the wolf noticing you has nothing to do with what direction it's facing. It's just random as far as I can tell. I confirmed it with 1x1 gold tiles, and I lined them all up, and I found that the wolf charges when I hang around the 5th tile away. Bear in mind that's actually farther than the villager's line of sight, so you don't necessarily know that these wolves are coming unless you've already scouted the area. First, I have a villager that is attacked without loom and he was not told to attack the wolf, so that means that the wolf is automatically going to get the first attack in, and my villager is going to be responding to that. In this case, the villager has 25 health points and 3 attack, and the wolf also has 25 health points and 3 attack. The villager dies, and the wolf has one health point left because the wolf attacked first, and the villager doesn't get to complete that final attack. Okay, but what if the villager is told to attack the wolf head on, so they're both charging at each other? I did this three times, and the same result happens every time. The villager dies, and the wolf is on one health point. I've got to say, if you're leaving the safety of your town, you should definitely get loom, because I don't think there's a way to micro that, or at least not reliably, so that a villager without loom will beat a wolf. If you know of a way to get the first strike on a charging wolf, definitely let me know in the comments below. Maybe check that nobody else has put it down there first though. Okay, so now just for fun, what about we try a scout cavalry? Well, he can surprise attack the wolf, because the wolf won't by default chase him, so he gets one extra attack in. Now we get the same situation where the wolf and the scout cavalry each attack with three, and the scout cavalry ends up taking 24 damage before the wolf dies. That means your scout would not be able to take on another wolf by himself, as he has only 21 health points left, and takes 24 in order to attack a wolf. An exception might be if he's team fighting with a villager, so now maybe they would be able to take on at least two wolves. Next, I tried a villager against a wolf after Loom, and the villager ends up with 22 health points, or just more than half of his health. That's a big jump, because not only did you get another 15 health points from Loom, but the villager melee armor also went up by 1, so the wolf does 2 damage per attack, and the villager still does 3. That should mean that a villager with Loom can take on 2 wolves in a row, and have 4 health points left over, which is exactly what we see. Okay, so what about 2 wolves at once? Well, the villager doesn't survive, but a few things happen. First of all, it depends on when the wolves get to him. If he can almost finish one of them off before the second one arrives, to the point that he's maybe one hit away, then he can probably take both of them. But otherwise, he's gonna die. Villagers do this dumb thing though where they try to go back and forth between the wolves and stabbing each of them. That ends up leaving both to attack them for the entire time, rather than trying to finish off one before moving on to another. Even if we micro the villagers better, he still only has 4 health points left when he fights both in series. So if he takes more than one hit while fighting two at once, he's a goner. Okay, but what if one villager fought two wolves and died, but he did manage to damage both of them? Is it safe to send another villager afterward to clean up the mess? Well, in this test, it looks like you are safe to send a second villager by itself, as in this case, the second villager survived, but only with eight health points. Again, the first and the second villager you've sent have both been attacked by two units at once. And I would think you're running too big of a risk, especially if that second villager ends up running into another wolf, that I think you may even have to send a third villager in a real game situation like this. 
it would have been better to send both of those villagers together. But the question is, how much better would that be? I don't want to have to spare two villagers in the Dark Age if I don't have to. So now watch as I take two villagers to go wolf hunting. Even with an unlucky attack on a weakened villager I was trying to keep back, the two villagers can take two wolves together, and then three more. Not bad. Having one villager circle around the other with the wolf chasing them while the other villager attacks it is an extra effective strategy. A team of two villagers properly microed could probably take out even more wolves. I want to know what your record is. Here's my next attempt. This time, it's not perfect again, but I did a lot more of the running a villager around the other and I almost end up getting seven wolves, where that last wolf had one health point left. So close. If I did it a bit cleaner, I could probably get seven, but I don't think eight can be done except by some exploit of the terrain. Speaking of terrain, do hill bonuses count against wolves? Hell yeah, they do. They take one damage uphill and dish out four. So wait, how is it possible that I've lost so many villagers to wolves if this is the case? If you send two villagers with loom, micro them around each other, and use hills, you could probably take out like 10 wolves with a pair of villagers. A villager without loom can kill a wolf if attacking downhill as well. Okay, what about three wolves at once? It does happen. Okay, well if you use the buddy system with your two villagers, you can survive it, but it's kind of tough. A bit of micro helps if they're all chasing one villager, and make sure that you're focusing on one wolf at a time. Also, just in case you didn't know, one of the Magyar Civ bonuses is insta-kills of wolves. A very handy Civ bonus indeed. Oh, and also Jaguars have identical stats to wolves, before you ask. And yes, the Magyar's bonus does count towards Jaguars as well. One more tip for you, that rumor that you've heard about how you can put a palisade wall on top of wolves and it stops them from attacking you, yeah, that doesn't work in HD or Forgotten Empires as far as I can tell. In fact, when HD, it very clearly does nothing. That being said, it could probably remind you of where a wolf is if you scouted it out with your scout cavalry. So to summarize what I found, if you plan to send out some villagers, perhaps in a black forest map, get loom first and send two of them together. I know what you're saying. You have to get that wall up early and you don't have time for loom and you can't spare two villagers. The fact of the matter is though, at least you'll get to keep those villagers and they can come back and be productive for you. If you don't follow those tips, then you're taking a risk, and it might end up costing you. Use the hill bonuses and the buddy system, and you'll be fine. I know this wasn't a real math intensive one today, but it's one of those topics that no one ever seems to talk about, but it comes up for me a lot in game, and I want to know what I should be doing. So thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.